I'm I'm getting to my my wits end. I almost can't take it anymore. Uh, the lack of quality across the board is driving me insane. This week, we're not even going to have a best of the week video because there's really nothing to talk about. There's maybe two or three comic books that I would even consider recommending to people. That's how shitty this week was. And it really all starts with Marvel Comics. Where Marvel Comics goes, the American comic book industry goes when it comes to superheroes and all that kind of stuff. And even the indie books. You know, I'm not talking about Dog Man. I'm not talking about Smile. I'm not talking about manga. I'm talking about American comic books, the industry that we all know and love, that we're watching burn before our very eyes. And it's all because of Marvel Comics' fault. And it starts with the top with Dan Buckley. We had that interview a couple weeks ago. He was like, you know, we're greenlighting more issues or more series at six and ten issues out the gate. Why are you greenlighting anything without a minimum of 12 issues out the gate unless it's supposed to be a miniseries? You're literally planning for everything to fail. That's why the writers can't write continuous stories that make sense. They're all self-contained. They get to a certain point, and then they literally do nothing. I've got a couple of examples out here, but nothing better than Superior Spider-Man. Was that announced as a miniseries? It didn't even make it to maxi series status. Did you realize Superior Spider-Man from Dan Slott was canceled? You probably didn't, because they never announced it. They never even acknowledged that the series isn't going to be continuing on anymore. It's just over, banished into the wind, I think on issue like seven or something. And the, and the worst part about this is there was no reason to make Superior Spider-Man. That comic book story had already been told, and yes, it was lauded, and that's one of the things that Dan Slott did on Amazing Spider-Man, certainly spun out into Superior Spider-Man, that people liked. That was one of the good things that he did on Spider-Man. People enjoyed that, but it literally was over. You could only put Doc Ock's mind into Peter Parker so many times before you're like, why the fuck are we still doing this? And what happened when you announced Superior Spider-Man from Dan Slott? It overshadowed another book from Dan Slott that was Spider-Man related coming out at about the same time, Spider-Boy. A blank slate, a, a character, didn't exactly like the design, figured they were going to do something stupid with it. I go in and read Spider-Boy this week. It's probably the second or third best comic book I read this week, but no one's talking about it because they released Superior Spider-Man essentially at the exact same time with the same creator. And everyone's like, well, it's Superior Spider-Man. That must be the more important comic book. And nobody ended up checking out Spider-Boy despite Dan Slott claiming he had the number one and two selling or best-selling comic books in all of 2023, Superior Spider-Man number one, and then Spider-Boy number, number one as well obviously for baiting speculators and collectors and all that kind of stuff. But in the end, having the number one selling comic book of the year that Dan Slott claims that he did, which I don't believe, I don't believe it at all, didn't mean dick. The comic book didn't even make it to 12 issues, didn't even come close to 12 issues, and it's already canceled. And things are just getting worse and worse at Marvel Comics. It's all kinds of bait and switch. There's no talent anywhere. Want to know why there's no talent? They're not paying anybody. From what I'm told, this is from a reliable source, Marvel Comics are offering an $80 page rate to artists right now to work on a new book that they want to do. $80 a page. That's fucking IDW numbers from 20 years ago. Those are boom numbers from 15 years ago. Yet that's where Marvel Comics are under the leadership of Dan Buckley and C.B. Sobolski and all these morons, the Legion of Doofuses. There's a reason that name fits them so well because they are so short-sighted. They can't see the forest to the fucking trees and they keep doubling down and tripling down on stupid short-term uh, business strategies. We got the Adamanium Armor recently introduced in Sabretooth War for Wolverine under Ben Percy. Well, that's a big collector's piece. You know, that, that's spec value. We might see the Adamanium Armor in the MCU one day. We better go check out that book. Did you read... Wolverine 49 or 50 that featured the adamantium armor? What the fuck did Wolverine even do with that shit? Absolutely nothing. He never even fought anyone with the adamantium armor. It was absolutely insane. One of the worst examples of a bait and switch I've ever seen in my life. And this shit is continuously happening at Marvel Comics time after time. Literally, he goes forehead to forehead with one of the exiles, tells her how much he loves her, lands on the ground to fight Greed and Creed, Sabretooth punches Graydon Kree's heart out through the back of his chest, then says he's going to fight Wolverine, runs away, Wolverine chases him down, and then some magic vines attack him and remove adamantium armor from him so they could fight once again. And guess what the adamantium armor ended up being? It wasn't even 
The purpose of the adamantium armor wasn't even so that Wolverine could fight Sabretooth, you know, even though he had been depowered. It was to reactivate his fucking X gene so he could be powered again. That was the purpose of the adamantium armor. There's only so much adamantium on the freaking planet in the Marvel 616, and you wasted it on something you could have put like a fucking copper gauntlet or something like that that wouldn't have cost that much. And it's like they literally did it so they could get speculators. They never even considered the fact that introducing something like adamantium armor, which I think is a stupid idea, that maybe they should actually do something with the fucking concept and not make it an enormous waste of time and money. Marvel comics fucking suck right now. They don't release almost anything in continuity that's worth a fucking damn. Even Moon Knight pretty much sucks right now. Everything worth reading is in the Ultimate Universe, and even after Ultimate Spider-Man number five, I'm not even fucking sure that's still the case. Did you read Ultimate Spider-Man number five? How much Spider-Man was in the goddamn comic book? We've had issue number one, no Spider-Man. Issue number four, no Spider-Man. And issue number five, no Spider-Man whatsoever. It wasn't even about Peter Parker. It's a freaking Green Goblin, Harry Osborn origin story with some of the stupidest payoffs and mysteries I've ever seen in my life. I'm not shitting you. The Prowler goes to break into a, a house. He sees a man on a Barca lounger with a holographic Tony Stark, apparently giving him powers or whatever. He left some Iron Man gloves there and he stole them because the dude was passed out afterwards or something like that. And it turned out that that was like fucking bullseye. Why would Tony Stark from the future that's trying to reassemble the heroes in the Marvel 616, the ultimate universe, give bullseye like fucking hand gauntlets like, like are you kidding me some of the fucking dumbest creative and and i'm at my wits end go read ultimate x-men is that an x-men comic book can you with a straight fucking face tell me that's an x-men comic book it's not there's nothing x-men are about it there's one character so far that likely is a mutant with maystorm or whatever the other character Armor, whatever her name is, she's not even a mutant. She gets her powers from like a fucking necklace or something like this. And it's like, I'm just, I, I want to rip my fucking hair out. There are so many publishers out there that are doing cool stuff. You know, you got Energon with Skybound. Conan the Barbarian under Titan is really cool and all that stuff. And people are, are responding to that because they're not going in on the gimmick. It's not variant covers. It's not variant interiors like these stupid red band things. It's not bait and switches every fucking time that they can get their hands on a character or an idea just to sell it to speculators. They're actually just going out there and telling really good stories. They went out there and found the best writers and artists that they could. They put them on the books, and guess what? People fucking like them. This isn't brain surgery. This isn't rocket science. You know what I'm saying? This is pretty cut and dry stuff. You take the best characters that you have, you go out there and you hire the best talent that you can, you put them on those characters, and people like it because they're going to do good creative new ideas nothing is new right now the big event blood hunt we've seen superheroes fighting vampires we've seen mutants fighting vampires none of this is new yet we're supposed to buy in on some 60 issue fucking event series while marvel comics basically destroys the american comic book industry by themselves and are now reduced reduced to offering page rates commensurate with IDW and Boom and fucking probably Action Lab, if they're even still in existence at this point. Vault Comics and Valiant Comics can offer you a competitive page rate with some projects at Marvel these days. That's how pathetic these guys are. And Dan Buckley's like, well, we're going to get the, the price down. We're, we're going to try to hold the line at $3.99 unless it's a number one issue, it's a milestone, or we have a major creator on it. Well, they're all number one issues at this point because you're constantly rebooting everything case in point another stupid creative idea a new issue of marvel comics invincible iron man is conspicuously absent from the publisher's just released august 2024 solicitations and while some ongoing comics sometimes skip a month it's confirmed it's something more marvel is ending jerry duggan's invincible iron man ongoing series and apparently as soon as july while neither marvel nor duggan have made an official announcement it would seem july's invincible iron man 20 will be the series finale they don't even care that they're canceling. Nobody's even mentioning, oh, yeah, that Iron Man series that's really bad that maybe you liked. We're not going to do it anymore. They really don't give a fuck. And really, at this point, 
making it to 20 issues is like a gift from God to these guys because they can't hardly get anything past six issues. Why did you make Iron Man an X-Men character? He's not a fucking mutant. Why did he even marry Emma Frost? It did nothing in the end other than to add the X-Men villain Fei Long competing with Iron Man to make Sentinels and stealing his company. Again, another retread of a storyline. And it never added anything to Iron Man. It certainly never added anything to freaking X-Men. It wasn't a cool status quo change. It was just being fucking lazy because Jerry Duggan was like, well, I'm writing X-Men. I don't want to have to write an Avengers book and have to think about other kinds of continuity. Then don't fucking write the Invincible Iron Man book or don't produce Iron Man at this point. Another series that's just being rebooted for no reason whatsoever. Go in a different direction. Put a new fucking creative team on it. Who gives a fuck at this point? Because we know the next time you do Iron Man, it'll be lucky to make it to 12 issues. Look at the lineup for X-Men from the Ashes. Uncanny X-Men will be fine. <laughs> X-Men will be fine. Wolverine will be fine. After that, I'm not sure that any of those fucking comic books make it to 12 issues. There's no way Nyx, NYX, ever makes it anywhere. There's no way Exceptional X-Men makes it past 12 issues. There's no way Phoenix or Storm have any staying power whatsoever. And the other book that they announced that should have been a surefire winner, X-Force, has one of the dumbest concepts I've ever seen put on anything X-Men related in my life. X-Men as thought crime police. Oh, yeah, that's really going to be a great idea. After what Jeffrey Thorne, you know, he seems like a perfectly reasonable guy. After what he did with Green Lantern at DC Comics, let's put him on an even more high-profile book at the moment. X-Force, and let him ruin that too. These guys couldn't see fucking talent if it fell out of the sky, sat on their face, and fucking wiggled. They can't identify good writers. They can't identify good artists. And certainly it appears at this point that they can't even afford to hire them. And we've been seeing it for years and years and years. Anytime they actually have a good fucking artist, they never stay on a book. Marco Cicchetto is the only one that I can think of really off the top of my head, you know, on that Daredevil run. Although we did get... Ryan Stegman for a very long time on Venom until they started doing the events and they, he didn't really do Venom anymore. But for the most part, once these guys make a certain amount of money, they just go and they start books. They go and they do the first three issues, maybe the first four issues, and then they go over to whatever is rebooting to the number one issue. And then you get a shitty fucking backup artist, somebody that fills in like a Declan Shalvey on the return of Wolverine, replacing Steve McNiven, where he's like, oh my God, what the fuck am I even looking at? This isn't even professional art at this point. And Marvel Comics will be the death of the comic book industry. We've seen so many comic book shops that have been around, not for 10 years, not even for 15 years, comic shops that have been around for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, long-standing legacies within their local communities that Marvel Comics have basically put out of business with their terrible creative strategy of wait. If we just concentrate on collectors and speculators with a heavy emphasis on the speculators themselves, that will keep us afloat. They'll buy the number one issues, they'll buy the variant covers, and if they don't, it doesn't matter to us because it's the comic shops that had to buy a thousand copies of a comic book they'll never be able to sell just to get the one fucking one in one thousand variant cover at this point. It's absolutely ridiculous what these guys are doing, and Dan Buckley even said it. You know, the industry has changed. Uh, a lot of things have been moving around. And we're not really sure how we're going to find that audience, but we're going to do something. You've done nothing but make things worse. Every time you reboot a comic book series, for no fucking reason, it drives people away. Every time you start something and don't finish it, it drives people away. Every time you start a book out with a good artist and then you fill it in with an $80 shitty artist as the replacement, People get driven away and they learn over time. Your brain is literally wired this way to see trends. And when I see Marvel comics, especially if it's in fucking continuity, I know it's going to suck complete ass. And Marvel had all this notoriety. They had all this publicity for all their characters. We had 15 years of excellence in the MCU. Iron Man, great. Captain America, great. People even were into Doctor Strange at the time. Never capitalized on any of it. Never capitalized on making an awesome Avengers run. No, we got that Jason Aaron garbage. And at this point, somehow, the characters that flourished in the MCU are in worse shape than before the MCU. Case in point, Doctor Strange has been through a lot in his comic book career, not the least of which was dying and then coming back to life a couple of years ago, not to mention his current status thanks to the ongoing Blood Hunt story. But could it all be a little bit too much for the Sorcerer Supreme? 
Marvel solicitations text for August Doctor Strange 18 sounds surprisingly final. Marvel didn't respond to a request for a comment, and there's no official notification that the title is ending, but it wouldn't be the biggest surprise if that was the case. Wouldn't be the biggest surprise because Marvel don't even acknowledge when they fail anymore. It's basically expected by the company. C.B. Sobolski, when he announces a book, whether it be fucking Spider-Man or X-Men or Doctor Strange or the Avengers or anybody, knows that it's basically a dead title walking the moment it hits the shelves. We're going to get a lot of speculators in on the first issue. We're going to say there's some characters. And then we're going to bleed people dry. We're going to claim there's a milestone in issue number seven. And then we're going to claim issue 10 is a milestone because we never get there anymore. And we're just going to bleed the entire audience dry with a thousand paper cuts instead of doubling down or committing to fucking quality. That is the only thing that can fix Marvel Comics woes. That is the only thing that is going to make DC Comics realize we need better quality. They will never do it on their own. They are literally the redheaded stepchild to Marvel Comics. If Marvel doesn't do it first, they will never do it. There's one or two publishers out there right now that are doubling down, tripling down on quality. Skybound and Titan, for the most part. Other than that, it's basically shit across the board. Certainly the indie scene is much, much better, but there are a lot more indie comic books coming out than there ever have been before. And there's a lot of garbage coming out of there too. You know, I'm, in, I'm enjoying the indie comic books and I'm appreciating that there's an alternative, but they aren't exactly blowing it up either. There's a lot of really stupid shit going on right now. And it's all fucking Marvel Comics fault. I don't care. If you're, if you're a Marvel guy, you're like, I'm a Marvel guy to the end. Your publisher is the fucking reason this is happening. Your publisher is the reason DC Comics suck. Because if they don't lead the way, all these shops are going to die. If they don't lead the way, we will never get quality back in American comic books again. The bottom is going to drop out of all this. They're just going to start licensing out the characters and shit like that. And it's all just going to dry up and end. If somebody at Marvel doesn't do something fast. Because the current state of Marvel Comics is atrocious across the line. Fall of X was hideous, especially Rise of the Powers of Ten, which I'll be reviewing on Monday for Worst of the Week. Absolutely atrocious. Amazing Spider-Man, atrocious. Captain America, not very good. Invincible Iron Man, atrocious. Bad comic books across the board. Avengers, a decent issue every five months or so. That's as good as it gets in the Marvel mainline continuity these days. And I've, I've, I'm not giving up. But they, but they really want me to. I can feel it. They're trying to make me quit. It's not going to happen. But fuck these guys. If, if they do not get their head out of their asses, if you would like more conversations about the comic book industry and how everything's so fucked up right now, with a few reviews about the stuff that is good. There were only two or three good books this week on the Hot or Not podcast. It was fucking ridiculous. I do want to invite you to go over to the Patreon. We have a lot more content, lots more podcasts, lots more fun with all your favorite guests. And I'm not always this mad, but I'm very mad right now. There's a link to the Patreon in the video description.